All right, camping and hiking with a cinema camera. Specifically, I'm taking the Blackmagic Pocket 6K cinema camera with me. Now, I know this is a very limited audience, possibly a very limited audience, who is really gonna pay attention to this video. Totally get that, but this might actually have some pertinence to you if you're doing long days, doing handheld, or long days with a lot of walking with your cinema camera. And so these are the few things that I found out uh, to be helpful to be a hindrance as well there's a few things that i found to be a hindrance but these are the things that i decided i think are essentials to take with me and i found out that while we were doing our hike i recently went to the mount baker snoqualmie national forest and we did winchester mountain lookout tower where we hiked up 1500 feet of elevation gain in about two miles of trail uh, and camped out in a fire tower and it was pretty awesome but you know carrying a cinema camera yeah we'll go into it so first off i want to say it's definitely hard you definitely need to weigh the circumstances and the benefits of taking the cinema camera with you on a, any specific trip so this trip i wanted to get cinematic shots for a promo video so i definitely needed to take my cinema camera because I wanted specific shots and I, I weighed the risks. You know, I knew it was going to be heavy. I knew it was going to be a pain in the butt to really carry this thing up the side of a mountain, but I knew it was going to be worth it. I knew the shots were going to be great. So really weigh your options. Do you absolutely need the cinema camera? Because most times the Sony's will work great or your, your Panasonic or whatever you're using. Your mirrorless is usually going to be great. But because I was going for a more cinematic, more professional look with my promo video, I wanted to take it. So it was worth it to me. This gear, some of this gear might be repeat for a lot of, of my subscribers, for my, a lot of my followers. Sorry in advance for that, um, but I'm just going to go through some of the gear. There might be one or two new things uh, that, I, that you guys haven't seen. But for the most part, it's a lot of the same gear. And I usually try to buy my gear with that in mind. Can I get, get it, you know, multi-purpose gear? That way I'm not buying three different tripods or, you know, whatever, different handles, different rigs to carry it. I want one rig that I can do everything with. And I get that sometimes that might be less than ideal for certain situations, but it'll pay off overall because you won't be spending a lot of money on multiple rigs. So this thing is just really heavy and it's kind of big. I mean, I, I haven't actually weighed it, but I'm pretty sure it's coming in around 12, 13 pounds maybe 14 or 15 actually. Um, so it is just, even holding it right now is just a pain. So you want to get a good top handle. The one that I use is the small rig with the rubber grip top handle. And the reason I like this, it's proven itself more worthy on this trip because I carried it for two miles and number one, it grips well, the grip, it, you know, sometimes a cheap handle, you'll notice, you'll notice the rubber coming off of the actual metal. This one, no slippage, uh, even with sweaty hands, it did great. I'm really pleased with this handle. Have been pleased, but this just solidified my choice of this handle. Before I go any farther, links to all my products that I use are in the description below. Check them out and please use those links. It'll help me out a lot. And thank you for doing that. And if you're interested in the rig itself, I have my video. I'll put a link to my video of, of this rig build and check that out. Next up, we're gonna talk about tripods. So it goes without saying, you want something that's durable, but you want something that's lightweight. If you're hiking, you do not wanna carry a full on, you know, a, a heavy duty cinema tripod up the mountain. You just, no way, not unless you have a team of like five or 10 people carrying your gear for you, which I did have help, Gabe. Gabe was a big help on this trip for sure. And I could not have done, I could not have done this hike without him helping carry some of the load, which is why I brought another person and to help me film some of the behind the scenes for these episodes. But you want a good tripod. Now I have two that I consistently use and I, I love them. Uh, the first is, the Davis and Sanford carbon fiber traverse. And as you can see, mine's pretty worn down here. It's, it's been around the world. It's hiked many miles with me and it's pretty awesome. It's just a ball head uh, on this one, but I honestly don't need more than this. And it actually, it's a very smooth ball head and you can get away with some really nice pan shots with that. 
with that friction and it's i've taken this through sand dirt rain snow everything and the, the head is still really smooth i'm really really happy with this tripod and i plan to have it for another five or ten years honestly it's it's phenomenal it's got some wear but for the amount of use that i've given it not really bad at all so this is my lighter of the two tripods the next one is the Manfrotto MVH500AH system. So this one is kind of Manfrotto's entry level tripod. Um, I shouldn't say entry level, it's kind of a mid, a mid level. You know, you're gonna spend three, 400 bucks for a decent setup. And this is a, this is a decent setup. Um, you got really solid tripod legs, extendable. They extend farther than the carbon fiber traverse. You also have telescoping center pole here actually mine's still dirty um, and then a nice fluid head and mine's really dirty right now but this system you don't want to put your cinema rig on the carbon fiber the the, the traverse it's just not gonna not gonna hold it period it will shake and wobble and you'll probably be afraid for your camera this is solid enough, but also lightweight enough that you can take this up the mountain, not worry about, about your shots being shaky, not worry about your camera falling over, <clears throat> but also saves you on weight and you're not dying by the time you get up or back down the hill. So really love this thing. And this is an excellent all purpose tripod. I use this for everything with my cinema rig. Like I said, this is like a middle ground, so I don't have to buy multiple tripods. Love this thing, check it out. Moving on to probably one of the best investments I've ever made. And it's only $80, $90, something like that. And mine is one of the first gens when they did their Kickstarter. Um, and I decided to buy the nicer one. This is, they had like the, the Capture Clip and then the Capture Clip Pro. So this is the Peak Design Capture Clip Pro. I don't know what the models are anymore, but I'll put a link below again. And this thing is just a brilliant piece of gear. And I've shared this before. But I cannot emphasize enough whether you, sh you know, doing shooting in an urban setting, an outdoor setting, anything. This thing is just absolutely worth your investment because you can clip this to any backpack strap. You have an Arca Swiss plate that comes out and locks in very nicely. But this can also go on the carbon fiber traverse head. So it, it's perfect for this clip, perfect for the tripod. I don't need to swap out the plates. Super easy best investment i have made i think in in 10 years literally love this thing check it out now there's a few things that i would recommend that you take and then there's a few things that i tr did take and i wish i had not the things that i wish i had not taken were my gimbal and my slider and the reason i said it is because i just i didn't pull either of them out like we carried the gimbal up the mountain didn't touch it slider I just left in the car because I hadn't I didn't even pull it out of the case um, so you know I love slider shots 100% but you can definitely get away especially if you're shooting 6k and you can crop and pan and zoom all in post I leave the slider at home and I can shoot slow-mo 60 frames in 6k 50 frames in 6k so if I want any motion shots I'll probably just shoot from the hip handheld stuff and I'm more than happy with that, especially for YouTube stuff. Really like it. So for me, it was not worth bringing the gimbal or the slider. Now you may think differently. That's totally okay. Do what you're going to do. And if it depends on the gear you're taking as well, if you can handle a, you know, a few extra pounds, five or 10 extra pounds, and by all means take it, uh, because you'll probably end up using it then. But I just didn't use it. Now, that being said, something also I would recommend is you take a laptop, and I have my, my beat up, you can probably see it in the corner, my old beat up laptop that I take on trips where I can just offload footage. And that's kind of a peace of mind because I have a backup of my footage, number one, and I can clear off my cards if I need more space. I have plenty of cards, but just to be safe, I like to back it up and have that extra space if I need. Because I take my computer, there's a few accessories that I absolutely must have. And I have used these for years and love them. First being the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. Uh, I have the 512 gig and it's pretty much all I need because I back up my stuff if I need to on this and on my 
internal hard drive. I back it up though, and I just offload it when I get home onto my RAID drive. But this thing is rugged. It's, it's I don't know if it's, it's water resistant, dust resistant, all this stuff. Um, I beat the crap out of this thing, but I love it. It's so solid and I honestly have never run out of space. Like it, for the, the scenarios when I'm traveling, never run out of space. It's just incredible. It's fast, reads like 550 megs a second. Perfect little drive. Link in the description. Secondary to that is the SanDisk, what is this thing? SanDisk Connect wireless stick. Now this thing is really cool. It's not, it's not revolutionary by any means. I bought this several years ago because it was actually pretty revolutionary then. What it does is connect wirelessly to your phone. So if you're shooting stuff on your phone that you wanna back up or you run out of space, you can wirelessly connect this thing. You don't need a computer. Back up all your stuff right onto it. You know that it's there and then you can clear off your phone and you have more space. And then you can throw this in your computer and it's just, it's just a regular USB flash drive. Finally, for the computer accessories, for my new laptop, I need, it, it only has USB-C ports, so I need a little SD card and a micro SD card reader. Great little thing, 10 bucks, perfect for what you need, and it's fast, and boom, simple. Even matches my computer. And lastly, for traveling specifically, I didn't take this up the mountain, of course, but the Pelican Air 1615 hard-sided case for my rig that I've been telling everybody that I'm gonna get and I'm gonna put my rig in it. I finally got it and I love it for traveling. This thing is solid, had no issues. I locked it up with a TSA lock. You know, you'll see how my rig fits nicely in here and I can fit several accessories as well. And it really, it's just perfect and it's really lightweight and I'm not afraid to check this. I checked this from Kansas City, Salt Lake to Seattle and back and no issues, you know, a little bit of of airplane wear of course but love this case highly recommend it links below and finally in these episodes i'm going to start to give you guys a book recommendation simply because i've been getting into reading more and you know getting inspired by some of these books that i've been reading and and just uh inspired by some of their journeys the hardships of course that they encounter but the beauty that you get to see in the back country that's what this channel my channel is all about and i absolutely love I've been loving a few specific books lately and I'm getting several more because just really getting into reading. This week's recommendation is called The Last Hill Walker by John D. Burns. Now this is a book about um, the English countryside. Basically for Americans, it's hiking, it's, it's backpacking. You know, they call it hill walking and wild camping. We call it hiking and backpacking. But he has just some awesome fun stories from the backcountry from his beginnings in his teens and up through his later years and i love this book and the sequels which i'll probably do next time great book the last hill walker funny stories fun stories especially if you love the uk you're gonna love this book even if you don't like hiking or walking or camping thanks for watching please like and subscribe and thank you again i will see you next time mm -hmm.